excited to be kicking off and conclude not kicking off concluding geez kicking off what are we doing I'm concluding the seven senses of marriage series I have learned so much from this series have you learned so much from this series I haven't got to tell my corny joke that I told in Danville here though so I'm going to start by telling my corny joke that I heard from I think I heard it from a pastor but the joke is that marriage is like a walk in the park Jurassic Park <laughs> Isn't that so funny? Is it, is it funny when you laugh at your own joke? I like to laugh at my own jokes. Marriage is definitely like a walk in Jurassic Park. Come on. If you're married, you know. I have uh, definitely learned so much from this series. And we've talked about vision. We've talked about communication and how to resolve conflict. Last week, we tackled the hot topic of sex in church. Do you all know that? We, ta we tackled that one. And I just want to encourage you that if you um, haven't been able to watch the past messages, you can do so um, on the app. There, are, It's a great resource for you to be able just to kind of check back on, listen to messages maybe that you missed throughout um, a Sunday or throughout the week or whatever. But I just hope that you're utilizing um, the, the app and utilizing what's available to you right at your fingertips <laughs> to be able to access God and his word and be able to speak to you. How many of you have rough weeks? We're kind of like the middle of the week, you're just like low. Man, pull out that app and watch a message or listen to a message, and I promise it will encourage to you, encourage, be an encouragement to you. Jeez, this is not going to go good if I can't even talk. Okay, so we're going to be talking this morning and concluding the series on seven senses of marriage. We're going to be talking about being anchored. Anchored. That's the title of the message. And the definition of anchor is a device, usually of metal, attached to a ship or a boat. You know, y'all know what an anchor is? Think about it. Okay, it's a piece of metal attached to a boat or a, sh or a ship by a cable that's thrown over, right, to dig into the surface of wherever it is to hold that boat or that object in place, right? Another definition of anchor is a reliable or a principal support. So, for example, like the quarterback is the anchor of the team, right? I love anchors. I love the look of them. I love the meaning of them. Uh, it was the first, it was, it was a, a first tattoo, one of the first tattoos, this anchor right here, because there's a scripture in the Bible that's one of my favorites. It comes from Hebrews 6, 19. It'll be on the screens for you as well. Hebrews 6, 19 says that we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. This hope that we have as an anchor for our soul, this hope that we have that is an anchor for our soul that keeps us firm and secure is Jesus. This hope that we have is a person and his name is Jesus. And he is the anchor. That's why you maybe see me down front getting all into worship because I can't help but thing I can't help but stand up here as I'm singing those songs speaking the name of Jesus believing the name of Jesus because there is power in his name he is the hope that we have no matter what comes in life no matter what storms no matter what winds no matter what rains no matter what we experience whether it's loss or pain or but come on y'all experience some storms in life or am I the only one? This hope that we have is Jesus. And who we are, who and what we are anchored to or not will determine the course of our life. Being anchored to God and his word is what's going to keep us firm and secure. When the world tries to sway us, when the world tries to get us off course, God and his power and his word are, what gonna, are what's going to keep us. It's what gives us direction. It's what helps us know that we can have this hope, that we're not just hopeless, that we can have power and direction in our life. His word is what brings light to our darkness. You know, John 8, tells us, John 8, 12 says, Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, if you follow me, if you choose to follow
follow me and my ways, if you choose to be anchored in me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. Come on, his way leads to life. His way is what brings light to our darkness. His way is the anchor. His way works. His way is the blueprint for our life. You remember that series we did last year on practical Christianity about building our life on him? Building our life according to what his word says? It works. It works in our marriages. It works in our relationships. It works in our homes. It works in our schools. It works in our workplaces. His way works. And when we choose to build our life on him, when we choose to anchor ourselves to his ways, it's like Matthew tells us, we're building our, our life on a rock, on a solid, firm foundation. That means that when the storms come, if you're building your life according to what his word says, you're choosing to build it, to anchor it to the firm foundation. So no matter what comes, no matter what circumstance or storm, you will be anchored to him. It is a firm foundation. Unfortunately, many of us are anchored to our culture. We're anchored to our world or to the ways that maybe mom and dad have done it instead of what God and his word said. And let's just be honest, like God's word isn't always the most appealing <laughs> because it's usually the exact opposite of what we want. God's word is actually offensive at times. When it calls out some stuff that maybe we're dealing with in our life, it can be it can be, a, it can be offensive. His ways sometimes seem so far out of reach, like we could never live up to them, right? And so maybe you found yourself like me questioning, like, what's the point? Jesus, I can't live up to this, or I've tried and I've fallen short in so many ways. Can I just encourage all of us today that Jesus sets the bar he sets the standard so high and so against our culture and our world so that we would need him <laughs> so that we will need him to do what he's asking us to do so that we will rely upon him as the anchor for our soul because without him y'all this is isn't possible without him following his word and being anchored to him is not possible he is the anchor he is the one that gives us the power to live this thing out when jesus would speak and he would he would speak to standards of the day and time and he would he would speak to different topics when he was walking and doing ministry, when he would confront issues of the day, he wouldn't do that to condemn. He would come in with grace and truth, not to condemn, but to redeem. He would, he would call things out. He would come and he would, he would bring and set the bar high, not to condemn, but to redeem, to reclaim, to be the anchor, to know that we can't do this without him. And Jesus is wanting us to know that what the enemy has tried to steal and kill and destroy in our marriages, in our relationships, in our families, that he has a better way. He wants to redeem and reclaim the anchor in our life. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God that he provided a way for us to be anchored to him. Being anchored to him and his word is what gives us the power to do this thing his way. It's like John talked about at the beginning of the year with, with our phrase, humbled and broken. Sometimes when we're, we're, when we're faced with tough stuff or we recognize some things that maybe we're not anchored to that we should be anchored to and, and we're kind of dealing with maybe some stuff that we know we need to address, it's like the phrase John gave us at the beginning of the year, humbled and broken. God breaks us 
and breaks us up in our way of thinking and our way of living, not to hinder, not to hurt us, but to reclaim and redeem and to build us back up stronger and better for him. When I think about anchors and storms and breakdowns, I can't help but think about John and I's marriage. And it was a mess. It was a mess. How when the storms of addiction and and flirtation and stepping outside of marriage and the storms of of depression and the storms of loss and hurt and betrayal came you want to know real quick how to know where you're anchored let a storm come let pain come let a circumstance that you can't control come and you'll know real quick where you're anchored y'all we love jesus We were planted in his house, but our marriage was not anchored in him. It was anchored in the world. It was anchored in ourselves. It was, it took that horrible breaking season of years for us to realize that we were not anchored in God and his word. We were anchored in ourselves. And it was that breaking season that God used to break down our pride, to break down our selfishness, to break down our desires and what we wanted for us to realize that we cannot do this without him. And once we surrendered to him, once we surrendered to his way, once we made him the true anchor of our marriage, once we got professional help and counseling and committed to doing this his way and gave it longer than a weekend to work, and realize that we were in this for the long haul, then only then and only then did God begin to build us up. And now today, we are better, we are stronger, we, we, our marriage is built on him, we are anchored in who he is, not in who we are. And do we miss it? Do we get it right every time? No, but that breaking season allowed us to recognize that we weren't anchored in him. We were anchored in ourself. And I think a lot of times we can look at, at, this, at this Bible, this, these words on these pages, which this Bible, your Bible, is the inspired word of God. Do you know that? This Bible is not just a suggestion for us. And even sometimes we can look at it as like a killjoy, like it's not very entertaining and like I said earlier it can be offensive and it can be the exact opposite of what we think and what we want but this word is alive and active and it is the anchor for our life and whether we like it or not it works every single time I heard a pastor recently say that it works when you work it His word works when we work it, when we allow it to be the anchor of our life. So no matter what comes our way, we can be confident, we can be assured that God has got us. Come on, the question I have for us today is where are you anchored? Have you been trying to do this on your own? Are you in the middle of a storm? Guess what? The anchor is right here we can throw that thing over and we can trust that it's going to go down deep it's going to go down into the right ground when we choose to put our trust and our hope in jesus who is the only anchor that works so i thought with the time that i have left i want to share just a few examples from my own life and from our own marriage where we were anchored to the world's way instead of God's way. And I'm hopeful that you can relate. And even more than relate, I'm hoping that this brings maybe an awareness to your heart that God would use this to help draw attention to maybe some areas where you've been anchored in the wrong thing. And we can get anchored in the right thing. We can turn, we can do what the Bible says, and we can say, okay, God, we've been trying to do this on our own, and it's not working. So we're going to repent And we're going to turn and go the other way. And we're going to trust that your word is true and active. And we're going to anchor ourselves to you. Sound good? All right. The first one. First one is a fun one. 
anchored to feelings. Come on, you can either be anchored to feelings or you can be anchored to faith. You can either be anchored to feelings or you can be anchored to faith. Anchored to feelings is like do whatever you want. Do what makes you feel good. Follow your heart, right? That's anchored to feelings. Have you ever heard that before? Like do what makes you feel good, right? We hear that all the time. And we're anchored to our feelings, and they're the ones leading and guiding and directing all of our decisions. And maybe you're sitting there asking, like, well, Brittany, is that really wrong? Yeah, it is. We're not meant to follow our heart. Listen to what Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10 says. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct according to what their deeds deserve. Our heart, yours and mine, are based on emotions. We say things like, what, what do I feel? What feels right? What feels bad? And then based on how we feel, that determines what we do, which means we're anchored to our feelings. We're anchored to following our heart. And the problem with this is that sometimes our feelings go against God's word. So the question is, what are we going to do when we recognize that we're anchored to our feelings and not our faith? What are we going to do when we reach that crossroad? Are we just going to like kind of shelf God's word and just say, nah, well, I'm anchored to my feelings. See, our feelings give us, being anchored to our feelings, give us the illusion that it's a solid anchor. It lie, that it lies to us. Our feelings lie to us thinking that we're secure in them. We want what we want. We think we know what's best. I remember feeling all kinds of feelings when I found out about John's addiction. I remember feeling all kinds of feelings when I wasn't getting attention from him at home and looking for it elsewhere. I remember feeling all kinds of feelings when I wanted to walk away from it all. Those feelings were valid, but those feelings were a fake anchor. They had me all over the place, up and down and in and out, one moment up, one moment down. So the question is, are we going to stay anchored to our feelings and keep following our heart, or are we going to anchor ourselves to faith, to trusting God's word, that he is the standard, and tell our feelings, hey, listen, I'm not anchored to you, I'm anchored to my faith. And so I'm going to tell my feelings, I get you, I see you, I hear you, I know you're going through pain, I know there's some confusion, I know there's some stuff that you're dealing with, but I'm not anchored to you, feelings. I'm anchored to my faith in Jesus. I'm anchored to what his word says. I'm anchored to him and only him. His word and his way are the anchor to my faith. Colossians 2, 6 and 7 says, And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Not follow your heart, not follow what makes you feel good, not follow what you want, follow him. And let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth that you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. Being anchored to our faith in him is what strengthens us. Following him, not our feelings, this is what leads to life. This is what helps us get through the storms that we face. So anchored to feelings, are you anchored to feelings or are you anchored to faith? The next one is anchored, are you anchored to unforgiveness or are you anchored to forgiveness? Have you ever been hurt or wronged? Come on, by show of hands. Am I the only one? You ever been talked about? Behind your back or to your face? You ever been betrayed in marriage? When we're anchored to unforgiveness... We play the whole eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Or we say things like, I don't get back, I get even. 
Do you know that Jesus has a better way? A higher standard? Matthew 5, 38 and 39, it says, you have heard it, you have heard that it was said. You have heard that the world has told you that it is said, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. We're like, yes, that's in the Bible. Awesome. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. It gives me all the reason. But I tell you, Jesus said, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. Who would do this? This seems so opposite. Who would do this? Chris Rock did it. <laughs> I knew that would make you laugh. If Chris Rock can do it, we can do it. Y'all, being anchored to unforgiveness seems like the real deal. It feels secure. Unforgiveness feels good, but it's fake. And it doesn't hold strong in the face of storms and struggle, especially in our marriage relationship. This world, this culture is feeding us this narrative that we get to hold on to unforgiveness, that we should get back to get even, that this world is telling us that we get to build a case before we forgive, that it's better for us to be bitter and resentful than it is to move forward and forgive. This world is telling us that we get to be the judge of behaviors and motives before we forgive. This world is telling us to repay evil with evil. This world is telling us that it's okay to be offended and stay offended. This world is telling us that we only get to forgive when we feel like it. But this is not God's way. In any area of our life, unforgiveness is not the anchor because it will lead us all over the place. Forgiveness is the anchor because it keeps us grounded and secure in God. Forgiveness is the anchor because it digs in and it keeps us humble before the Lord. Forgiveness, because we can't do it on our own, keeps us relying on God and his strength to forgive and move forward. Forgiveness allows us the ability to trust that God is fighting for us that he's going to right our wrongs. We like to be anchored in unforgiveness because it feels good. But unforgiveness is not good for us. It's actually proven to have horrible effects on us physically and spiritually. And what's crazy is that scientifically, when we hold on to unforgiveness and we are unforgiving, it actually makes us more susceptible to pain. And I know this, not just because I've learned about it, but because I've lived it. It's in our nature when we experience pain from someone or something, big or small, and we all have betrayal, abuse, neglect, hurt, unmet expectations. When we experience that pain, the last thing we want to do is forgive. But it's the first thing and the very thing that God commands us to do. When it comes to God and his word, he is serious about forgiveness. Matthew 6, 14 and 15 says, If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. I'd say God is pretty serious about forgiveness. Colossians 3, 13 says, Make allowance for each other's faults. And forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Being anchored in forgiveness looks like making allowance for each other's faults. It looks like plan for it. It's going to happen. You're going to be hurt. 
You're going to be offended. There's going to be stuff that happens that should not happen to you. It is a part of life. And I am not okaying any abusive situations or anything like that. I'm talking about the things in our life. I'm not saying stay in those situations. But forgiveness is not for the other person. Forgiveness is for you. Forgiveness is not for them. It's for you. And you've heard it said that unforgiveness is like drinking poison and watching the other person die. So when you choose to be anchored in forgiveness, you are saying, okay, God, I'm doing this your way. And in our marriages, we've got to be anchored to forgiveness. We've got to forgive and forgive quickly. Let's be anchored to forgiveness. And you're thinking, Brittany, I can't do that. You don't know what he's done. You don't know what I've gone through. The reality is God's word is clear. And we're either going to choose to be anchored to it or the world. I want to be anchored to God and his word. I want to do things his way because his way works. The last and final one is anchored to selfishness. We're either anchored to selfishness, what I want, what I need, or we're anchored to selflessness. Anyone in here selfish? Come on, I need all the crowd participation today. We're all selfish, aren't we, Max? We were born selfish. We want what we want, how we want it. We want it now. Being anchored to selfishness is definitely the norm. Again, it's an anchor that seems secure seems firm, seems like the right one, but it's fake. And it gives us this idea that we know what's best for us. And our culture and our world just continue to feed those selfish desires. I remember how selfless I was when we first got married. Man, we were a team we, we had fun together. We started a family. We moved across the world. We were, we, 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 we. But man, life, kids, <laughs> kids, <laughs> kids, unmet expectations, betrayal, pain, that all happened. And before long, we became I this, I that, you this, you that. We were no longer we. We were were divided. And it really doesn't take much to get us divided in our marriages. It doesn't take much to get us divided in our homes or in our workplaces. It doesn't take much to get us divided in our schools and even in our, our neighborhoods. It doesn't take much to get us divided because we all want what we want. We want to be anchored to that selfishness. And really what that is, it's being anchored to pride. Being anchored to think we know what's best. But there's a better way. Philippians 2, 3, and 4, Paul says, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. Humility is thinking of others as better than yourselves. Humility is serving. This is the better way. It's the Jesus way. Mark 10, 45, for even the son of man came not to be served, but to serve to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. Galatians 5.13 says, For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. Wow. Serving one another in love. I wonder what our world and our marriages and our relationships would look like if we tried to outserve 
one another? What if that was the goal? What if we tried to outserve? Is that possible? Yes, it's possible with Jesus. When we're anchored to selflessness, we can serve and think of others better than ourselves. Serving others, especially the people closest to us, come on, that can be the hardest, right? Like we can serve here at church and we can serve all the others, but you go home, I ain't serving you. I know you. But it's possible with Jesus. We can do this. We can be anchored to selflessness, anchored to serving and sacrifice. Jesus set the ultimate example for this. He set the ultimate example for us. He humbled himself to die for you and for me. He sacrificially served by paying the price for our sins and for our shame, something that we cannot do on our own. None of this is possible without Jesus. So where are you anchored? Are you anchored to him? Are you anchored to his word? Are you anchored to what he says? Are you anchored to living your life his way? And I believe this moment, everything about this morning has led up to this moment. Because I believe there are people in this room that you're not anchored to Jesus. You've chosen to do this life on your own. You've chosen to live life your way, thinking you know what's best. But there is a better way. The bad news is we've all sinned. The bad news is that we all fall short of the glory of God. The worst news is that none of us can save ourselves. The good news is that God sent his son Jesus to save us. And the great news, the best news, is that you can choose him today to be your savior, to be your anchor, to be the one that you cling to and hold on hope to. No matter what storm you're facing, 